or put Jesus on the front, pray before you go. What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? Hamlet said that. What's this bike doing somewhere between an adventure tour and a sport tour? Suzuki's GSX S1000 GX. Suzuki claims this is right between adventure tour and sport tour. 5.9 inches of travel in the front and rear. You've got an inline four cranking out 152 horsepower with 79 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it's a quick bike. We're going to take it on the highway in a minute and see what it can do. Let me show you some of the features. So here you can set your different presets. Um, you have seven traction controls. You can preset those all you like. You can toggle through. You can set this to auto on the suspension. You can set this for a passenger. You can do passenger luggage. You can do two passengers. Uh, or you can just leave it on auto and it will determine all of that itself. Uh, you can set your suspension on soft, medium, or hard. Uh, they are claiming this bike is 45 miles to the gallon. I would probably argue that. Uh, you're going to want to hammer this bike the second you're on it. And I'll bet you get more like 36, 38. Just guessing. 59 plus inch wheelbase. Uh, it's about an inch and a half uh, shorter on the wheelbase than the V-Strom 650. Since they've gone for the V-Strom suspension at 5.9. Pretty close. All right. Let's take this thing on the highway. It seems to redline just under 12,000 RPMs. The This is the inline four from the GSX S1000. I had the S1000. I loved my GSX 1000 actually. Big fan of that bike. But this does not, I believe, have the variable valve timing on the higher end, of course, as your Jixer would. Oh yeah, this thing is real easy to deal with. Not crazy about the shape of the tank. Uh, it's kind of a wide stance, the way your knees are bowed out a bit. Turn signals, not self-canceling, by the way. Let's beat that truck, here we go. Let's give it the beans. Oh yeah, this thing's redonkulous. Even fifth gear's got crazy torque. Oh yeah, this windscreen, by the way, is uh, pretty much worthless. First gear is a little anemic, but I do have the traction control on seven. Second gear, however, I think you will find to be amazing. As a matter of fact, I think you will find every other gear on this amazing. This is one of those bikes that gets you to your higher speed so fast and so reasonably that you didn't realize you were doing 80, 85. I'm sorry, officer. I had no idea I was going that fast. A lot of vibration in these rear view mirrors. But I will say the rear view mirrors are large. That's nice. I mean, the rear views are just shaking. And I'm in sixth gear. So... I don't know if I'm wild about that. I should have probably put some stabilizers in there or something like that. Little rubber things at the bottom here would have solved a lot of those issues. Um, six gear, doing 65. Yeah, 4,500 RPMs. Not even beginning to tap out this motor. We're going to do another come around on the highway here. We'll take it up a little faster and see what's up. The seat is about as comfortable as a sport bike seat. The seat is terrible. Inspired by the muzzle of a 1942 Sherman tank designed by the great-grandson of the Marquis de Sade. It is not comfortable at all. Not even a little bit. The leg position is cramped pretty much like a sport bike. Um, the FJR was much more spacious in my opinion in terms of that distance between the knee bend and your feet. Um, my legs are a little smushed up in this thing right now. And I feel like I'm on my GSX-1000 and not on something that has 5.9 inches of suspension travel. The thing is, on something that has 5.9 inches of suspension travel, I should be given a little bit more leg room than this, in my opinion. All right, let's hit it a little bit. Let's see what's up. First gear. Yeah, there's a lot of power in that mid to upper range. The gears don't have a super amount down low, but when you hit the mid to upper, there's great pull. Like right here. Right here in that mid-range, man. You can feel it on this bike. It's great. It also has Suzuki Road Adaptive Stabilization. The computer adapts to uneven road surfaces no matter what. It's a smart bike. Alright, let's go around the track the trailer here. 
long tip 10 hole fuel injectors to improve atomization of the fuel. It's got way more pull than my Bistro I've ever had. This is literally a GSX 1000 on stilts. Nice, soft stilts. The thing is, if you're wanting to develop something with a five gallon tank, which this has, and you want someone to be on it for hours and hours and hours, and maybe even take it across the country, and they offer all these nice sport bag sets for it, and everything like that, these hard bags. This bike, I don't know if it's the bike for, for you. There, I just set the cruise control. Cruise control is instant for a couple reasons. Number one, your leg position is cramped. And I mean, it is cramped. It reminds me of my old B-Strom 650. It's cramped. I don't know why Suzuki does that, even on the B-Strom, you know? The Honda VFR 1200, man, my 1200X Cross Tour, I got tons of leg room going that way. Uh, my Versus 650, lots of leg room. Very comfortable bike, even though you're in an upright riding position. I don't hate it. I just think there are things that they could have done better. I'm sure if you stand up on the pegs, you could, you could do some fire roads, but you're not going you're not going to go V-Strom deep with this. You're not going to go KLR deep with this at all. This is really super street side. Super street sport tour, that's what I would call it. I like the electronic suspension, that's nice. Everything uh, happens off this thumb toggle, that's nice and easy. Cruise control makes sense. Uh, the ergonomics are, aren't bad where my hand position is. Wind blockers for the hand, nice. Look into my eyes. Pretty well planted. I will say the steering feels a little heavier than my GSX 1000. It feels a little more planted to me. Probably that, uh, I'm sure that wheelbase has a lot to do with the straight line stability I'm feeling right now. It is liquid cooled, but to reduce heat, they also added an oil cooler, the same one they put in some of the GSXR models. Quick shifter, slipper clutch, yeah, I mean, they packed a lot in. And this, the stability controls and the adaptive controls they put in this system, in this bike, are quite good. It's a smart bike. It's all designed to keep you safe while you're going fast, which is brilliant. They thought about all these things, all this technology, all this engineering. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. But you just couldn't give it a good seat. What is wrong with you? And maybe one and a half extra inches for your legs. Maybe one inch. One. I'm old. Doing stunts for 30 years. One inch. You just couldn't do it, could you? Look at Siggy. <laughs> Look at the torque is just... The torque is... It is uh, the torque will definitely make you smile. The torque's amazing. The pull's amazing. The raw horsepower at your disposal is amazing. I like seven traction controls. And when you preset this stability control system up here on its different settings, it'll reset some of those presets for you. This is quicker than the FJR 1300 in my opinion. Uh, you can watch the full review of the FJR 1300 on my TG Motor Rider on YouTube if you want. But the FJR was very fast. But if I was in the market for this or the FJR, I'd get the FJR to be honest with you. I really would. We'll slow maneuver this thing in a parking lot, see how good it does. All right, let's cut this thing sharp. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I must say, I must say, I'm impressed. I don't agree with Suzuki's position on their website where this is between an adventure tour and a sport tour. No, this is between a sport tour and a sportier tour. It is just like my GSX-1000. Even though they lifted it up, I didn't gain any leg space. I'm still scrunched up here. You know, when you're crossing the country, you can be a little scrunched up, but not like this, man. Uh, total honesty, FJR 1300, way more comfortable. Um, pound for pound, if I was going to buy this or an FJR, I'd pick the FJR because it's... I mean, I, maybe some people are going to say you're comparing apples and oranges. Uh, they're calling this a sport tour. They threw the gauntlet down. FJR 1300 is a sport tour too. So, if you're going to be a sport tour, yes, you've got the fuel. You got the big fuel tank, five gallons. You got the fuel range if you ride it sensibly. Sport tour to me means I can tour with it in a reasonable comfort. That leg position 
stinks. This stock seat stinks. It's too narrow and it's terrible. And I understand they need it narrow so that you can put your feet down because it's a tall bike. I understand that. You can achieve both. The Kawasaki Versus seat gives you space back here so you can sit back on it and you're comfortable in longer longer distances and i'm a fan of the technology i do believe they packed a lot of good stuff in there to keep you safe while you're going quick which i think is amazingly cool and that's what creatures such as we are to do crawling between earth and heaven put jesus on the front pray before you go tg motor rider signing off